Hey, what's up guys, Rip here. So it must be a day that ends in Y because we have another member of the gaming industry having a meltdown over gamers. You can read this headline here, it says, after Alan Wake 2 failed to turn a profit, game's senior community manager calls for bigots to be removed from gaming communities. Now, like a lot of recent meltdowns from people in the gaming industry, this situation had to start with Concord and its failure, of course. You guys know about Concord, its story, and its very quick and brief existence. And I believe today is the day it's supposed to officially shut down. But this is the tweet that kind of got her involved, this community manager here. I actually read this tweet in a video from two days ago. Basically, this person is talking about the failure of Concord blaming it on a bunch of bigoted right-wing gamers who are thriving off of conspiracy theories and self-deception and all this stuff. And then they close this thing by saying, I guess this is the dystopian world we have to live in right now, where I said, if you are literally that upset about this bad game failing, I think you should just log off of Twitter for a bit. But it appears they heard my message and went with a different route to protect the echo chamber. But that tweet would get a response from Khalif here saying that you need to uh, give your community and social teams autonomy and resources to battle against toxicity. How that looks in actual practice, well, your guess is as good as mine. But this is where we would get Vita. So she would finally come in here and agree with what he is saying and talk about good, ed good eggs in the community serving as role models. But down here is the important part. She says, getting bigots out of your communities is a band-aid and not a permanent solution. So it's not the issue that she's trying to call out bigots. The problem is, to people like Vita, everyone who is not one-on-one -on -one ideologically linked with them, if you're not exactly on the same wavelength, you are probably a bigot in their minds. We've seen people called bigots for simply not liking Concord or not wanting to play it. So when people say stuff like this, and they want to do this as a form of control, they want to also control the narrative and say, okay, all these people I don't like are bigots, and let's get them out of the community. It's definitely a power play for them. But going forward, who is this woman? Well, they are, like I said, a senior community manager at Remedy Games, and they worked on Alan Wake 2, which is very convenient because this brings us once again back to Sweet Baby Inc., because of course it does, right? Uh, Sweet Baby Inc., uh, Publicly listed projects, of course, features Alan Wake 2. It's always prominently displayed across their personal uh, website and also all of their social media accounts. And a lot of people look at Alan Wake 2 as the uh, success story of Sweet Baby, a time where they really pumped out and were uh, a part of a, a big successful project. Well, recently we learned that Alan Wake 2 hasn't even turned a profit yet. They haven't even earned enough money to recoup the investment that Epic Games gave them. Only when they fulfill that investment can they start making a profit. So they have made literally zero dollars as a studio currently on Alan Wake 2, despite the fact it has sold over a million copies. So I guess maybe being a little upset about that and maybe getting some PTSD flashbacks watching Concord uh, fail so quickly, maybe she just wasn't in the greatest mood when she made those tweets, but as this article points out, there's a lot of other very interesting tweets that she's made over the years where it, it really shows the kind of mindset and what she prioritizes when she is working on a game. So let's begin with this right here, why she got hired by this company in the first place. She openly says that she joined Remedy Games because she wanted to work on Control because during her on-site interview, she saw a game with a female protagonist that looked like exactly the kind of game that she wanted to champion and build a community around. So someone would actually ask, well, okay, if that protagonist was male, you wouldn't have worked there. Well, she says directly, yes. So if it had a male protagonist, she wouldn't have taken the job. It seems almost, almost like this is irony or like a joke, but it's not, trust me. As we look through these next tweets, you're gonna understand exactly where she's at with her creative and professional decisions. So here we have this tweet saying, something that continues to surprise me about influencer management is while I repeatedly and vocally insist to agencies that they should pitch us diverse creators for paid initiatives. The initial desk proposal I get almost every single time is wall to wall, white men, do better. White men, do better. Just by existing apparently, I guess that's an issue. But as you can see, she is uh, no stranger to trying to inject studios with these DEI initiatives and things that look like it, but it gets even worse. So she says this, I'm saying this with respect for all my fellow devs 
and hope they come to the space with only good intentions in their hearts. But to me, the what a game dev looks like hashtag might not need quite as many white men participating. We know that's what game devs look like. Ah, yes. Once again, a person in the gaming industry who is a self-hating liberal white woman. Man, I've never seen those before. I mean, we pretty much cover someone like this every other video. I don't know why there's so many people like this in the gaming industry. It's very bizarre. But their tweets would also get more bizarre here. So this one says, The first pride was a riot. Companies aren't your allies. Capitalism isn't your friend. And no kind of consumption under it can be ethical. Ask what brands who post rainbows in June are doing for their LGBTQ plus employees the other 335 days. Give gay people your effing money. Is that a threat? Like, whoa, simmer down. But she also talks a lot about capitalism here, right? And she's clearly very anti-capitalism, which is rich because she is in a position to make games for a living that likely only exists under capitalism. So her complaining about that is tone deaf and really just ridiculous. But on top of that, she says there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Like what? You mean Alan Wake 2? Like, would it be unethical to buy Alan Wake 2, the game you're working on, because there's no such thing as ethical consumption under, under capitalism? That's insane. Like, imagine being the studio and hearing one of your employees saying something like this, literally spreading a rhetoric that would basically shame people for purchasing your video game. That's a crazy thing to say. But here's one last tweet we're going to look at. So she says this. All I do at work is befriend everyone on the writing team so I can t then tell them to make every character gay every time it's feasible to bring up. More often than you think, if you think this isn't about you, affectionately, yes it is, it's called direct action. So yeah, I think it's pretty obvious the intentions she has when she is participating on any sort of a project in the gaming industry and yeah. It's not really exactly surprising, and I guess you can understand why she was so upset when a woke game like Concord crashed and burned in a week and a half. But also in her original thread, she would uh, include this quote right here, where she says, hit tweet, which first of all, had 200 likes. I don't know what you're talking about. But they say, uh, give take this your money if you have some to spare. They do great work if you're strapped for cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... She mentions Take This. Now, you might recognize Take This. We've talked about them before on this channel. They are a DEI initiative with government funding who wants to basically use the guise of mental health to uh, police various gaming communities and, 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 and various things like that. People don't like it, okay? If you look at the quotes, half the people are gamers who are saying, good riddance, we didn't ask for your, your help here. And the other half are members of the gaming industry trying to support this initiative. And you can see they need uh, $80,000 by the end of the month. That's a lot of doubloons, okay? Uh, it's kind of embarrassing to be a government-backed initiative and somehow be short on cash. Like, I don't know how that happens, but it's very strange. But if you look into their, their website, you know, you see like on the face a, a noble action they're trying to do with mental health here. But... As you look deeper, you realize they are a nonprofit funded by the government. And I don't know about you, I don't really feel comfortable with the government uh, policing things going on in the gaming communities because I don't think they have my best interests at heart and also the experience of whatever you're doing in the gaming community. They, they don't know what's best for you and you just don't want them involved. And on top of that, look at some of the companies they work with. You see Ubisoft right here. Like, yeah, it, it starts to make a lot of sense, doesn't it? On top of that, I found a very interesting article a blog on their uh, on their website where they talked about Gamergate 2. And the narrative they try to spin here is hilarious. You understand who their allies are, and that's the games journalists and the woke developers. It's very clear. They, they start off by framing uh, Sweet Baby Inc. as an innocent victim in all this. They don't mention anything their employees are doing. You know, they're talking about harassment and bullying. They don't talk about any of the bad stuff Sweet Baby Inc. employees were doing. And they immediately frame Sweet Baby as the victim of a just pointless and out of left field harassment campaign from evil gamers. And on top of that, they try to say that this whole like recent wave of what they believe is a harassment campaign is the results of political events, in particular, the U.S. presidential election that is taking place this year. 
So they are trying to use the U.S. presidential election as a way to basically uh, frame all of this that's happening right now. And also that kind of goes with their entire initiative and the fact also that conveniently they are getting government funding at the moment. So it's very suspicious, weird look. But again, I'm glad we could see this take this initiative once again brought to light, but not in the way they probably intended. But also when we're speaking about success stories here, Black Myth Wukong has just sold 18 million copies in two weeks. So we talked about the failure of Concord and the issues with Alan Wake 2. Look at Black Myth Wukong and Game Science, a development team that says no politics, no nonsense, no woke stuff. And look what happens. 18 million copies in two weeks and $700 million in revenue. And I believe their budget was under $100 million. So they are raking it in and also they are working on a DLC. That's great news for them and really great news for gamers in this regard. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time.